Hey everyone, Dave Darling here, and I've got a question for you. What do Black Sabbath, Wagner, West Side Story, and the theme tune to The Simpsons all have in common? You give up? Well, here's a clue. Tritone, Tritone, that weird spooky musical interval that crops up in music from 19th century classical to jazz and blues all the way through to heavy metal today. So let's move over to the keyboard now and find out what it's all about, the Tritone. The name Tritone tells you what it is. Tri means three, so we're talking about a musical distance or interval of three tones. A tone or a whole tone consists of two semitones. So let's say we start on C. So here's middle C and we go up two semitones. We get to D. Two more semitones or one whole tone gets us to E. And if we repeat that, one more time, we've gone up six semitones or three whole tones and we get to F sharp. So that distance from C to F sharp is a tritone. And here's what it sounds like when both notes are played together. It's pretty jarring, right? In music, it's what's called a dissonance. Pleasant Easy on the ear sounds are said to be consonant. So for example, the octave is consonant. And so is the perfect fifth, which is the distance from C to G. Sounds good, that's consonant. But there we have a dissonance. The tritone is a dissonant interval. In musical terms, the tritone is a diminished or flattened fifth. There's our fifth if we're in the key of C. And if we flatten the fifth by going down a semitone or diminish it by going down a semitone, we get to this diminished or flattened fifth. Alternatively, we can start at the fourth, the perfect fourth, and go up a semitone. We call that an augmented fourth. Either way, it's the note that's midway between the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth. It's also the note that's halfway along the octave. There's our octave. And so it's strange that it's dissonant. After all, the notes are either end of the octave are perfectly consonant, so you might expect that a note that falls exactly in the middle would be consonant with those notes too. It doesn't work out that way. And if you do the maths or the physics, as we'll do in a future video, we'll understand why. Dissonant notes are notes which sound tense or unsettling when played together. So why would you want dissonances in music? when you could just have nice, relaxed consonances all the time. Well, the reason's simple. In music, as in life, tension is interesting. Tension is exciting, and it can be very satisfying, especially if it's followed by release. It's why we want novels to have ups and downs, tension and release. It's why we go on roller coasters. It's a thrill. The tension takes us out of our comfort zone, and then we get to relax at the end. Dissonances are an important tool of the composer and the musician. One thing everyone remembers about the film Jaws, for instance, is the music when the shark is about to attack. Those alternating notes, just a semitone or a minor second apart, highly dissonant. They help 
to set us on edge. They're thrilling because of their dissonance. In the same way, the tritone, which is often considered to be the most dissonant of the intervals, can be used to inject tension into a composition. Now, back in medieval times, when most music was composed for use in church, that's exactly what they didn't want. They wanted beautiful, pleasant sounds that would serve, so they thought, to glorify God. By contrast, anything that jarred on the ear was considered offensive to God. It's, it's probably going too far to say that the tritone was actually banned or deemed heretical. I haven't heard of any composer in the Middle Ages or the Renaissance who'd included a tritone in one of their pieces being burned at the stake or put under house arrest, but there's no way their music would have been actually played in public. Consonances were thought of as being godly, dissonances as just the opposite. That's how the term diabolus in musica, or the devil in music, came about to describe the tritone. There's also a technical reason it was shunned. The tritone is a notoriously difficult interval to sing. Well, times have changed. Beginning in the 19th century, some composers went out of their way to include the tritone in their music with the very purpose of creating tension or a sense of unease or outright evil in their music. Wagner uses it in a section of his Gotterdammerung, the fourth and last part of his Ring Cycle, to portray a pagan scene. It's in the violin part of Saint-Saëns' Dance Macabre. Liszt, Sibelius, Bartok, Beethoven and others all use the tritone in various ways. And the tritone, the diminished fifth, isn't just used on its own as a bare interval of two notes that are three tones apart. You find it embedded in larger combination of notes such as dominant seventh chords. So what's a dominant seventh? I'll give you an example. G dominant seventh consists of the G major triad, that's G, B, and D plus a minor seventh, which in this case turns out to be an F. Now, embedded within that chord now, we've got a tritone because the distance from B to F is a diminished fifth or a tritone. And the addition of that minor seventh in creating that tritone has set up an instability in the chord. You don't want any song or even part of a song to end on that chord. So there's an edginess to it. It's a great chord but we don't want the music to end there because that would be like being stuck at the top of a roller coaster just hanging there. We want it to resolve or reach a satisfying conclusion and one way to do that is to go to the C major triad which is here. Okay. So G being the dominant or fifth note of the scale of C major. So we get that effect going from here to here. The edginess of the tritone or the flat fifth as it became known in popular music made it an interval of choice in both blues and jazz. The blues uses mainly notes from pentatonic or five note scales supplemented by so-called blues notes, which are used in passing between the main notes. One of the commonly used blues notes is the flat fifth. In jazz, the flat fifth is everywhere. Although again, it's used subtly to give that constant urge to resolve that's at the heart of all jazz playing. One of the most famous uses of the tritone is in the song Maria from West Side Story. The root note for ma, let's say C here, jumps to the diminished fifth or the tritone for re. So we get ma re, which sounds pretty ominous if you left it like that. But then it resolves to the perfect fifth on the R. So you get Maria, pure genius. Great piece of writing. Maria, 
I just met a girl named Maria. In fact, Leonard Bernstein used the tritone throughout the score for West Side Story in places where he wants to hint at violence and approaching danger, he leaves it unresolved. And where he wants to suggest optimism, he'll follow the tritone with the resolve chord. He does a great thing at the end of the musical where he leaves the audience hanging by having two alternating tritones play out against each other. Not surprisingly, the tritone is used over and over again in various genres of rock where sounding as edgy, dangerous, and sensual as possible is the name of the game. You hear it famously at the start of Jimi Hendrix's Purple Haze and everywhere in heavy metal. Black Sabbath play a tritone virtually all the way through the song called Black Sabbath off their Paranoid album. Uh, Sabbath's guitarist Tony Iommi didn't know any musical theory or the history of the tritone when he started out. He hit on the tritone simply by experimenting with sounds that evoked a sense of foreboding and doom, and so we hear that bass G jumping to the G that's an octave higher before settling back on the C sharp midway between the two and just hanging there unresolved. And as a nice extra touch he does a trill on the C sharp bending the string back and forth and pulling the note away from a pure tone into a microtone to give it added dissonance. Thanks very much for watching. Check out my other videos on music and science on this channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you again very soon.